So you're thinking of learning a new language and you've probably heard of Duolingo. It's the popular language learning site and app and it comes with the very good price of free. So I decided to try Duolingo over several months at several different levels to find out whether or not it's worth dedicating your time to using it. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter with my review of Duolingo. So you might be thinking of learning a new language in the new year or perhaps you have an international trip coming up. In any event, there are a lot of good reasons to learn a new language. And Duolingo is a good start for some of those reasons in some ways. Let me explain. Duolingo has a really low barrier to entry. All you have to do is hop on their site or download the free Duolingo app, answer a few questions about the language you want to learn, your current skill level, which can be anything from a complete novice to advanced, and some reasons you want to learn that language. It could be for cultural reasons, for travel, or just because you want to learn something new. It's a very easy and quick set of questions, and then you're off to learning. Duolingo is based on what they call XP points. XP points are basically a weighted point system for various language lessons, and you can set a daily goal, with 30 XP being roughly equivalent to about 15 minutes a day. You can adjust your daily goal whenever you want and track your progress using the XP meter on the sidebar. And the XP meter is just one of the ways that Duolingo really focuses in on the gamification of their site and their learning language tool to make sure that you're keeping up with your language lessons. You'll get notifications daily to make sure that you're practicing every day and Duolingo keeps track of your daily streak and will email you to make sure that you get in a lesson if it looks like you might miss a day. To keep track of all of those stats, all you have to do is create a free account on their site and then you can see where you rank against other language learners in the same language daily. So you can see where you are in this leaderboard. And even if you're not particularly competitive, it is a really good way to motivate you to not miss any lessons. The layout of Duolingo's language lessons itself are like a game. They're bright colors, buttons, and all you have to do is hit start to begin. Depending on the language level you entered in the beginning, you'll go through specific lessons which are customized for you, which use a few different methods for teaching. One is vocabulary, where you're given some words, you click what they mean and you hear them. Then as you advance, you have to pick out the correct word among a few others. The words are also read out to you, which is helpful, so you're exposed to pronunciation and accents. Citron. Now, Duolingo doesn't force you to repeat back the words that you're seeing on the screen and the words that you're hearing. And in my experience, repeating words back when you're learning a language is really good for memorization. The way Duolingo is set up is it's as easy or as difficult as you want to make it, but that part isn't incorporated into the gamification. In other words, it's not forcing you to make it more difficult. So it really requires a lot of self-motivation for you to push yourself to the next level. For example, when you're given a lesson where a sentence is read back to you and you have to write it back, Duolingo defaults to letting you click the words that you've just heard. It will correct any mistakes and if you keep fumbling on a certain set of words or parts of a sentence like pronouns, it will focus on those just for you. But it's a little bit easy to game the system just because of the way Duolingo sets up their language lessons. For instance, in languages where the first letter of a sentence is capitalized, the words in the selection with a capital letter basically give away the first word. And since you're picking and choosing words and sentences you've heard previously, it's pretty easy to click without having to comprehend what you're choosing. Also, when there are plural options, like in this case about socks, the answer really can't be socks, since there isn't a plural version of that word in the English answers. That kind of gives away the answer that it can't be anything other than shirt and shirts as the correct nouns in this case, since there is the singular and the plural version of those answers. You're told if you're correct or not with the translation provided to you, but you could really go lesson after lesson without having to really read those. Maybe this is part of Duolingo's plan. Perhaps those little clues like the capitalization of their plurals are designed to help you remember and designed to help you push you further and further as you advance along. I'm not too sure about that. To me, what's also missing as part of the Duolingo experience is having to repeat back the correct answers that you're providing in written form. So it would be great, for example, if Duolingo could use the microphone in your phone or in your laptop to actually record you repeating back what you're hearing. It could then analyze, you know, your accent, make sure that you're saying those words properly. And it also helps you with memorization and it actually gets you speaking. Unfortunately, you don't have that. So for me personally, when I'm using Duolingo, I repeat back the correct answers so that I'm actually 
saying those words, but the app itself doesn't force you to do it. And it's not part of the language lesson. You kind of have to modify that on your own. So you get a kind of book smart with Duolingo and you get really good at kind of just being good at Duolingo. Like there's a very specific kind of set of answers that it's looking for and the way it's structured. You can really go through the lessons and just kind of, like I said, fix the game for yourself and make sure that you're just getting the correct answers. And doing all of that might not exactly translate very well into actually being able to converse in a foreign language. But I do like the option to make a particular lesson harder, which often entails having to type in the sentence you've heard back rather than just picking and choosing from a small set of words. In the free version of Duolingo, you get ads in between the lessons. So occasionally you'll get an ad as you move through the lessons and you also can't protect your daily streak. So Duolingo keeps track of your daily streak of how many days in a row that you're making sure that you're getting in your daily XP goal. And if you don't have the advanced versions or the paid versions, if you just have the free version, you basically lose that streak if you skip a day, whereas the paid versions let you keep that streak if you miss a day from time to time. With Duolingo's paid plan called Super Duolingo, you can maintain your streak if you miss a day in exchange for lingots, which are points you accumulate with each completed lesson. Super Duolingo also lets you review past mistakes and get lessons focused on strengthening your weakest areas in a given language. A Super Duolingo subscription runs around $12.99 a month. And for most of you, a Super Duolingo subscription isn't going to be worth it. It doesn't enhance your language learning experience and the ads in between the lessons are few and far enough between in that it doesn't ruin your experience using Duolingo. Yes, it's nice to be able to see your past mistakes and get those customized lessons for your weakest points and to be able to continue your daily streak. But really, you're not missing out much on the overall Duolingo experience if you don't have those features with the free plan. But with all of that said, how good is Duolingo at actually teaching you a new language? Well, it's really good at vocabulary and it's really good at teaching you basic sentence structure, but it does have some limitations. Because Duolingo doesn't force you to write or speak and doesn't give you any customized feedback, it can be really hard to advance beyond specific points you might be confused on. So for example, you might be learning Swedish. You see the verb to like and you see it's ticker. Jag tycker om den. But you might not realize that ticker comes with the word om after it. You might think that's a pronoun or related to the words after it or just not understand why a sentence is structured in a certain way. And yes, when we're children learning to speak a new language, we just kind of muddle our way through and pick everything up. But when we're learning to read and write, that's when we get those specific grammatical rules for a language in class. And no, I'm not saying you need to go to a class in lieu of using Duolingo, but if it is going to focus on reading and writing, which it seems very heavily focused on, then it would be helpful to get those grammatical clues and rules along the way just to make sure that you're doing things right. And it can also give you some context which you might not have had otherwise. When I was using Duolingo, I realized that it's very good at teaching you vocabulary and basic sentence structure. And through that process, you can really find out where your strengths and weaknesses are in a given language. But Duolingo isn't going to push you like some other language services or get you conversationally speaking in a short time like some others. There's also repetition in the way the lessons are structured and not a whole lot of variety. Duolingo can get a bit monotonous, especially when you get into the more difficult grammar lessons. It can also be a bit dry and doesn't use some of the visual memorization clues I've seen in other services and is very repetition based, which works well for a daily program. But if you're only using it for five or 10 minutes a day, your language learning is going to be limited. And if you're using it for 20 or 30 minutes a day, you're likely to run into some rough areas where you could really benefit from some language lesson personalization. Duolingo is a good start and a good supplement but it isn't your one-stop shop for learning a new language or even getting conversationally lingo down quickly. If you're going to try to learn a new language online, I would suggest that you use Duolingo and pair it with some other language learning services so that you can get that cross-pollination and get different types of language learning lessons and figure out what might work best for you, but also get a different variety of lessons that can help you learn a language more quickly. But Duolingo's short and daily lessons are really good at keeping that language fresh in your mind. So if you need that extra motivation to keep up your language learning, Duolingo is really good at that. It's also free, very accessible, and does a very good job at making sure that you don't give up on learning a new language. That's my review of Duolingo. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know if you have any experiences using Duolingo, what your thoughts are. 
down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video.